As a sophomore in high school, I was already overwhelmed. There were so many classes to study for, leadership positions to consider, and answers to give whenever someone asked the inevitable question. So where do you want to go to college? As a sophomore in high school, I lived my life through the lens of a distant college application. That year, I also began to realize that this was not a particularly healthy behavior. It made me constantly worry about whether or not admissions officers thought I was doing enough. It took the fun out of learning. Fortunately, by my senior year of high school, I had developed a much more improved state of mind. I was still doing quite a bit, but I was also having a lot of fun, and I was learning a lot. That year, I received a surprisingly nice letter from a small school in Palo Alto. So what changed? How did I go from being a stressed out sophomore to a Stanford accepted senior? The answer is simple. Somewhere between the 10th and the 12th grade, I stopped worrying about college, and I started focusing on learning. That's what I like to talk about today. Um, as I share my story, I'd like to also share three reasons why you should make learning and not college your priority. So the first reason is this. You have very limited control over where you get into college but you have absolute control over the kind of person you choose to be. During my sophomore year of high school, I was just beginning to come to terms with this fact. I mistakenly believed that if I took harder classes and I held more leadership positions than my peers, that I was set when it came into getting into my dream school. That Harvard and Stanford and MIT would be vying for my attention. But it's not that simple, as you guys know. Um, that year when Decisions rolled, rolled out for that class of seniors. I was taken aback. Even a 4.0 class president could get rejected from her dream school. That's when I started realizing that college admissions are largely a crapshoot. Um, so I began thinking to myself, um, why are we all trying so hard? I saw the students around me put inordinate amounts of pressure on themselves to succeed to get into the college of their dreams. They were so overwhelmed that they often felt like they were just surviving through high school. Because of the ridiculous loads, they decided to take on. If they knew that there was no guaranteed light at the end of the tunnel, I wondered to myself, how are they so willing to sacrifice their short-term happiness? I asked myself this question because I knew that I wasn't. I was no longer capable of delaying happiness in pursuit of a goal that I had no control over, one that I may or may not achieve. This left me, this left me feeling a little bit deflated, um, and I felt confused for a long time. Um, I started wondering to myself, if I, I can't choose where I get into college, what can I choose? Um, and I eventually realized that I can choose the kind of person who I want to be. Luckily, uh, if you can call it that, um, I was in a unique position where I really, really didn't like who I was at the time. Um, I was someone who did things purely for the sake of impressing college admissions officers, people who I didn't even know. I was someone who hadn't made time to explore who I was or what I liked because getting into college had always been the higher priority. I was someone who learned because she had to not because she actually wanted to. As I began to realize who I was ashamed of being, I also began to realize what kind of person I actually wanted to aim for. I simply wanted to be someone who learned because she genuinely enjoyed learning. I wanted to be someone who learned for fun. So for the, from that point on, I stopped using college as a measuring stick for how I spent my time. Instead, I very actively tried to participate in activities and engage in classes that kept me excited about learning, regardless of whether or not I had a leadership position or whether or not they would make me look good on my college applications. For someone who is prioritizing, who is optimizing for college instead of for learning, this might seem kind of risky, and maybe it was. You know, maybe it wasn't the best strategy for getting into college, but living my life with this framework helped me become a person who I actually liked 
Someone who woke up in the morning, excited to learn. Since getting into Stanford, I've began to realize that this insatiable desire to just keep learning is a common denominator among top students. It is this kind of person who consistently gets into top schools, gets offered their dream job, starts remarkable projects, feels an immense sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, and who is genuinely interesting to talk to. It is this kind of person, someone who simply likes learning, who is consistently successful. That brings me to my second reason why you should make college, or why you should make learning, not college, your priority. College in itself does not guarantee success, but a commitment to learning does, regardless of the path you choose to take. As a sophomore in high school, I began to research alternative education. Um, what I began to understand was that it was absurd for us to try to take every student and have them conform to just one style of learning. Right? By definition, individuals need individual attention. Even though I did well in school, and I really liked classroom learning, when I looked around at my friends, I realized that a lot of them were being completely turned off from learning because of their negative experiences in the classroom. And that really frustrated me. Um, I believe that everyone should have the chance to discover how they like to learn and then have opportunities to learn in that way. So during my senior year of high school, I joined an organization called UnCollege, um, writing the newsletter and cultivating this community of self-directed learners. What we do at UnCollege is we challenge the notion that college is the only path to success. Despite what their glossy brochures would like to have you believe, um, colleges have a lot of problems. So at UnCollege, we try to help young, young people understand both sides of the story. For example, even though college graduates, on average, earn more than their high school counterparts, it's also true that 44% of college graduates are un- or underemployed. College is no longer a sure path to success, even though it might have been just a few years ago. So what is? From what I've observed, at least, key to success is a deep and intrinsic commitment to learning. The most successful people are the ones who take control of their education in and out of the classroom. If you take, advantages, if you take advantage of the resources around you, um, if you approach your education in an entrepreneurial way, and if you treat every experience as a learning experience, it is very difficult to lose in life. Schools want to accept you because you'll take advantage of their resources and you'll make them look good when you graduate. Employers will want to hire you because if you're keen on learning, you'll be developing skills that you need to make value and contribute to the workplace. People want to be friends with you because you're passionate and motivated and constantly doing interesting things. If your goal is to be successful, as long as you make a commitment to learning, it doesn't really matter if you make a commitment to school. School is just one path to pursue a higher education. That brings me to reason number three, why you should prioritize learning. College might not be the right next step for you. And that's okay. There's so many more avenues for learning out there. Maybe you love learning, but in your heart you know that you don't really want to be at school. Maybe you want to take a year off from school, or take a year on in the real world, whether to travel or to get, get work experience or to just learn on your own. Maybe you already know that you don't thrive in a classroom and you don't really want to be there, and that's fine. College is just one path. If you're excited about it, and if you have the financial resources to go to college without getting into absurd amounts of debt, by all means, go. But if you are like me, 
and you had reservations, understand that there are other options out there. For me, I knew early on that I would be taking time off after high school. Even though I did well in school, I'd spent 12 years there and I was looking for something new. So last year, after getting accepted into Stanford, I did the unthinkable. I chose not to go, at least for now. So <laughs> I, took, I decided to take a gap year and to give myself a chance to experience things that I couldn't experience in the classroom. Um, in the past eight months, I've worked full time at an education startup. I've given a talk in Norway. I've done guerrilla marketing all across the US and it's been fantastic. By taking a gap year, all I was really doing was deciding to prioritize learning over college. By taking a gap year, I satisfied my curiosity for things that I could learn outside of a classroom. And when I do get to college, I'll be able to make it more use of it, more effectively. To me, choosing to take a gap year was really just another choice to put learning first, always. So if we take it to be true that if you just keep learning, you will be successful, then we also have more flexibility in what we decide to do after high school. College may not be the right path for you, and you don't have to go. Right? There are so many other ways you can learn, resources you can use. In school, there's a tendency to fixate on a specific path college, instead of focusing on what really matters, what will really help you achieve your goals, which is the process of learning. So consider this. If you are someone who right now is learning just for the sake of getting into a good college, that you might be learning for the wrong reason. At some point, you have to learn to learn just for the sake of learning. You have to start learning because it's fun and you like it. As I wrote on my Stanford application, there is nothing more rewarding than the act of getting stuck on a hard concept and the subsequent triumph of figuring it out. Thank you. <laughs>